I am here to share more prepared pantry information with you as we're going through this time of trying to figure out what's available in the grocery store and then how do we preserve it or extend the life of products so that we are able to nourish and feed our families and ourselves. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about freezing things because I've been getting a bunch of questions from people wanting to know can I freeze this, can I freeze that sort of thing. So I, I wanted to share about that. And you know one of the things I wanted to mention as well is that when you are looking at your freezer for food storage, just as I talked about before, needing to write down what's in your pantry, you need to write down what's in your freezer as well so that you're able to meal plan. And um, as a matter of fact, mine has gotten a little overwhelming right now because of what's going on. So I actually need to pull it apart and make notes myself. But it's definitely a good idea to keep track of what's in there. So first thing that we want to talk about when we're talking about freezing is please label. Please, please label. I know you think you're going to remember what that lump of something is, but three months from now you're going to be looking at it going, hmm, what was that? So we really want to make sure we label everything clearly. The other thing that's really good is to make sure that we make portion sizes if we can. Obviously, if you buy a whole chicken, it's going to be really difficult to portion it up if it's raw. So you're just going to put the chicken in there and know that when you pull it out, you're going to cook it and then go from there. But if you're buying a chicken that's already parted up or if you have, you know, other things that are accessible to portion, then please make portion sizes, figure out what you need because you also, you know, we talked about food fatigue before. You don't want to get bored because you made a serving for 10 and there's only two of you and you're just eating it forever. Um, the other thing is when you're cooking, you can certainly portion your leftovers. One of my favorite ways to do that actually is to get some glass containers. And I do recommend storing in glass, not plastic and make your own TV dinners. So instead of packaging your leftovers where it's like, this was our protein, this was our first veggie, this was our second veggie kind of thing, make TV dinners with them, label those, and then you have an already prepared dinner that's ready to go. So that is a great time saver. One of the other things that's important is to make sure that you are wrapping in either butcher paper or parchment first for those things that are raw and then you can wrap in plastic or aluminum foil. I'm not a huge fan of wrapping. Even if you have baked goods that you want to put in there, I would put parchment paper over them first and then wrap in the aluminum foil because we don't want any of that to make contact with the food if we can help it. And then, as I said, I do prefer glass. Glass is always preferable. One of the other things that you want to do when you're freezing, if you can, if you have room for it in your freezer, is to put a cookie sheet in the freezer and then as you're putting things in there, layer them on the cookie sheet until they freeze because then they'll freeze flatter and it'll make it easier to stack. If things are all bumpy, it gets very hard to get creative about stuffing it all into your freezer. Um, so if we're freezing, we need to defrost so we can use it. So there's a couple of tips for defrosting. One is that you can always defrost in the refrigerator. You just pull something out. I do recommend putting a plate under it because if there's any moisture and it drips, it just gets all over your refrigerator and it's a mess. Uh, things like a whole chicken, like a whole four pound chicken could take as much as three days to defrost in the refrigerator. So simply be aware of the fact that the larger it is, the longer it's going to take to thaw if you want to thaw specifically in the freezer, in the fridge, so that you can make adjustments to your meal planning. If you have things that are in parchment paper and um, aluminum foil or, or even plastic wrap that you want to thaw a little bit faster, one of the things that you can do is put it in a Ziploc baggie, and I do recommend Ziplocs for this because it doesn't come in direct contact with the food, uh, and put it in cold water. So if you were to take something wrapped in parchment and aluminum foil and try to thaw it in cold water, the challenge is water is going to get through and it's going to make whatever's in there soggy. So you do really need it in a Ziploc baggie, squeeze out all the air, zip it shut, and put it in cold water. And then not for meat, but for other things, if you want to thaw them a little bit faster, and the reason not for meat is because I don't like leaving meat out for a long time, is you can take things like baked goods, veggies, etc., and put them on 
a cookie sheet or some kind of a metal rack or whatever and metal is a conductive element so it'll help pull the cold and that'll help thaw it a little bit faster if you happen to have a cast iron pan those are fabulous for using for thawing if whatever you're thawing can fit in the middle of that so now let's talk about what can you freeze and this is this is just a quick list for you eggs eggs are freezable not whole uh, and not definitely not in the shell because they'll crack but if you want to, let's say you happen to have a lot of eggs and you're concerned about them, you can scramble them and then portion them into what you're going to use. So if you're going to make omelets, you know, you can portion them into those sizes. If you're going to make a quiche, obviously you can portion it more, but scrambled eggs will freeze and thaw very well. They can't be used for anything other than scrambled eggs or baking though, because obviously they're just already scrambled. Milk. I talked about milk before. Milk is freezable. The one thing that's important to know is that if you're using whole milk that has the cream on the top, you do need to pour a little bit of it out. Otherwise, it will pop the, it has a potential to pop the top. And because you don't want that to happen, you want to pour out a little bit. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can put a little salt in there and then put the top back on, put parchment paper over it, wrap it in foil, and then put it back. It's important to think about where you're placing milk if you're putting it in the freezer. I generally recommend trying to freeze half gallons rather than full gallons. One, because you don't have to thaw and use as much as quickly, but two, because milk tends to bulge and get all wonky. It's liquid, it just freezes the way it freezes and it's kind of hard to control exactly the, the distinct shape that it's gonna have when it freezes, so just be aware of that. Speaking of dairy, cheese is freezable, however, only the firmer cheeses. Soft cheeses do not freeze well. They get really awful. So cottage cheese, sour cream, cream cheese, brie, um, mozzarella, Munster, all those soft cheeses do not freeze well. So if you're going to think about having cheese and freezing it, just be aware of the fact that you really need the harder cheeses. Uh, I know if you're interested, some people can buy like a large block of cheese and then pre-shred it if you're someone who uses a lot of shredded cheese and then you've got that all ready to go or you can just have a block, freeze the whole block knowing that you're gonna use however much in that week or 10 days once you, uh, once you thaw it. Bread is definitely freezable. Uh, one of my favorite things to do if you have a loaf of bread, for example, when I buy my favorite gluten-free bread, I take all of the slices out of the loaf and then using some wax paper I make like this little S curve thing and I put two slices of bread in each one so then when I want to take bread out instead of having this whole huge frozen lump of bread that you're prying a knife in there trying to get it to come apart you can just peel off two slices of bread so that and then obviously you know rolls and those kinds of things freeze well you just want to make sure that they're well wrapped and you also want to make sure that you squeeze out all of the air. One of the things that's important to know is that freezer burn happens because there's moisture. And so if you squeeze out the air, that means less moisture, less potential for freezer burn. Um, you can also freeze potatoes or sweet potatoes or yams if they are cooked and mashed. So they don't freeze well if they're raw, but if you happen to come up, I had someone who recently contacted me and they bought a 20 pound bag of potatoes and then they wanted to know how they could store it a little bit longer. And so you can cook it and freeze it. So generally I'm going to recommend that you're going to make something and then portion it out uh, for whatever you're going to do with it. If it's potatoes, one of the things you could consider doing is making a shepherd's pie or something, and then it's all ready to go in the freezer so you can pull it out. Or if you just want to have the mashed potatoes, that's fine too. Tomatoes are uh, something that you can freeze. I love to make something, when tomatoes are in season, I love to make something called tomato junk. And so you can make it a couple of different ways. You can do just tomatoes, salt, and pepper, or you can do tomatoes and onions and garlic and salt and pepper, or you can fancy it up even more and add herbs like oregano and basil and parsley and that sort of thing. Uh, so when I make tomato junk, it's a little bit of olive oil, cut up the tomatoes, saute them in the pan until they start to melt. If you're adding the onions and garlic, you want to saute those first for a minute or two before you add the tomatoes. You're not looking to cook it all the way through, you're just looking to get it a little softer. 
and then package it up in containers. And you can use tomato junk for so many things. You can use it to top a dish. You can use it as part of the ingredients. It's great in like frittata. It's wonderful if you're making a sauce of some kind. Like it's just a great way to extend the usability of tomatoes because they do tend to go pretty quickly. So tomato junk. Um, speaking of herbs, you can, if you have fresh herbs, they generally only last like seven to 10 days. And if you think you have too many fresh herbs and uh, you, know, you, you bought a container at the store and you didn't use it all, I'm gonna recommend that you freeze it as quickly as possible. So what you wanted, because the faster you freeze it, the more nutrient value it has and the better it's gonna work. So the two ways that I really like to freeze or fresh herbs is to chop them up and then you can either put them in like a, a ice cube tray, like a silicone ice cube tray or a metal one, whatever, put the herbs in and then pour oil over them, olive oil, because the olive oil will get hard and freeze. And then you have this wonderful seasoned oil that you can throw in a pan if you are sauteing something or you can also um, use it, you know, if you're looking to flavor a dish or whatever. So that's definitely a good way to do it. The other way is to chop it up and add it to softened butter. And then I tend to roll it into like little logs. I don't know why I've just always done that. And so then you have these little logs of herbed butter that you can use, you know, cutting off a pad or two or pulling it out to use for putting on top of vegetables or for seasoning those potatoes or whatever. So that's a great way to do it. Freezing fresh herbs plain can be done, but they don't hold up very well. They tend to turn black and their consistency is not great when you freeze them. So it's much better to freeze them in something. Avocados. There's that old joke about, you know, I can't go out tonight, my avocado is about to ripen. <laughs> uh, the problem is you buy avocados and sometimes they'll sell them in the grocery store, five or six to a bag, and then they all ripen at once. And you're like, oh. so uh, you can freeze avocados. However, you need to peel them, you need to pit them, and it's best if you mash them first. You can freeze a half of an avocado that has been peeled and pitted. The problem is it gets very firm and thawing it, it gets sort of melty. So it's better to just mash it, add in a little bit of salt and a little bit of lemon juice if you want to, although you don't have to, they don't, funny enough, they don't turn black in the freezer. Um, but uh, anyway, you can then use them in dishes to make guacamole, if you're making avocado toast, if you're putting a dollop on top of something, but mashing is definitely better. Veggies. Um, so veggies can be frozen. Veggies that are above the ground, things like peas and beans and those kinds of things need to be blanched first. So what that means is have a big pot of boiling water and have a colander or a strainer basket or something that you can dip into that boiling water and then pull out. So you, you wash them, you clean them up if they, you know, if the beans have strings on them or whatever, take all of that into account and then put it in the hot water for like 30 to 60 seconds, pull it out, run it immediately through cold water, and those are then blanched vegetables. You can package and portion those up for whatever you need and use those to go into the freezer. And then the last category uh, is fruit. So fruit is definitely freezable and you know it's it's good to use in a lot of different things you can bake with frozen fruit you're going to want to make more like a crumble and things like that um, <clears throat> when you're freezing berries or you know peaches or those kinds of things i do recommend cleaning them and drying them first before you freeze them <clears throat> and then bananas can be frozen two different ways you can either freeze them in the peel or out of the peel i actually freeze them both ways uh, if you freeze them in the peel, they are fabulous for baked goods because what happens is you pull the bananas out of the freezer, let them sit till they thaw, and then they get all mushy and goopy and they're perfect for making banana bread, banana muffins, that kind of thing. You, If you want to put them into a smoothie, then what you would want to do is freeze them whole so that you can chunk it in there, either, either the whole banana or half a banana into your smoothie. So those are the different um, tips for how to use your freezer. I hope this is helpful. 
I wanted to mention that I do share more information in my newsletter. I mean, I am the ingredient guru. I am still all about all the stupid stuff that they do to our food and making sure that you are informed and empowered to make those healthy choices for yourself. Right now, I think it's really more important for us to be able to understand what's in our pantry, how to use it, how to nourish our families. And so I'm sharing a lot of those tips. If you are not subscribed to the newsletter, I'll put the link down below. I would encourage you to sign up for that so that you can get even more information than what I'm sharing in these videos. So I hope you guys are doing well. Have a great day and I'll be back soon. Take care. Bye.